Monitoring a water distribution system in a city is very difficult. There's tens of thousands of kilometers or miles of pipes uh, under, under, underground. Um, and one of the challenges is simply how do, you, how do you set up a continuous monitoring system? Where do you put the instruments? So one of the challenges we've dealt with first and foremost is trying to figure where the optimal placement of our sensors to get the maximum information. So that's one of the first challenges. Um, a very, it's a very interesting uh, situation with the water pipes because um, the hydraulics really control everything. We find that uh, in Singapore, for example, there are large pressure pulses in the pipes every day as people consume water and as water is pumped around the system. Um, so understanding the dynamics of the system uh, from a few monitoring points is an interesting challenge. It's enabled us to predict water consumption. So we've been able to use the, the system we've got to enable people to plan much better for the water consumption that's going to be used on a daily cycle, for example. Um, and it's enabled us, therefore, to figure out when you need to pump water at what time of the day and therefore how to be more efficient. There has never been such a thing as a smart water grid in the city because there's been no instrumentation prior to our project. In some respect, the water industry is catching up to the electrical industry. You know, we don't have meters on every building that record in re with enough detail to, in time to be able to do this. So the water industry is catching on to the idea that in fact they could make their water grid much smarter about the way they move water and where they store water. Um, the systems we're using also have this very interesting um, possibility of combining this information with water quality measurements. One of the biggest challenges, as you're probably aware, is the number of um, cases where people have gotten sick from poor water drinking water quality which is really only discovered afterwards in testing for bacteria and things days and days after people have gotten sick. So kind of trying to come up with real-time systems that could warn about deteriorating water quality is also a very important element. So what we've discovered in the water industry is that with a common monitoring system, we're able to address many different problems that previously weren't being tackled. The one we've made most progress on is, is leaks and bursts. Um, in the burst business, we're, we're able to detect pressure waves going through the pipes and we're able to figure out where the burst occurred. That's very useful because by the time people know about a burst, it's usually water pumping out of the ground, it's flooded the whole area, uh, it causes massive disruption. If you could detect it at the time it occurred, the damage is much less. So we've come up with systems that deal with that. We've also come up with systems that are very good at spotting changes in the state, change, little leaks that occur over time. So we've made a lot of progress in the analytics for doing this, combining with our own monitoring data. So we have a, as a system, we have a sort of end-to-end -end system. We make the measurements and all, all the analytics supporting it. Water losses are becoming a huge problem for many, many different uh, utilities all around the world. Um, it's a combination of things such as uh, um, antiquated infrastructure. I mean, the best example is probably London where the, the losses are estimated at about 30 percent but all third world countries and most countries have got infrastructure of, of questionable quality and they're losing unacceptable amounts of water and they're aware of this but they've never actually made any measurements that, that can confirm the sources. Um, the current systems of finding these leaks involves literally walking around the system with acoustic detection devices at night when things are quiet. It's an impractical proposition on a, on a city-wide scale. Um, so this is why nothing has really been done in this topic. The alternative is simply to replace infrastructure, which is, I think everyone knows, when you dig up the water pipes, it's massively disruptive. So trying to find ways to manage your assets and extend the life of your, your infrastructure is, is extremely important. So this is why this is such an important topic. But, by the way, it has impacts on other things too. A, a burst can create all kinds of problems. Uh, you may remember in Boston a couple of years ago we had a water burst where water got into the gas mains and, and affected everyone's heating in the north end of Boston. Uh, we've had other leaks which have damaged the, the public library collections so we, we know very well the, the, the level of damage that can be associated with this.